A name like Disciples 3 Renaissance doesn't convey a whole lot of information beyond the fact that this is the next game in the Disciples series. So for those of you not up on your late century, early millennium PC gaming, here's a quick refresher. In Disciples, you explore a turn-based world of high fantasy. From an aerial viewpoint, you guide your hero around a large map and explore, all the while gaining resources, experience, and items to help you grow stronger. You and your small army do battle with the enemies arrayed against you using a hex-based combat system. These solid, enjoyable gameplay elements form the foundation of Disciples 3 and, along with the lush, detailed visuals, make the game very appealing from the get-go, even in spite of the poor tutorial. Unfortunately, as you progress through the very lengthy campaign, you soon hit a plateau of repetition and monotony. Most battles become foregone conclusions, unexplored areas of the map hold little surprise, and even leveling up your characters loses its luster. Those looking to find renewed satisfaction in multiplayer competition will be disappointed to find that Hot Seat is the only option. So while there is definitely some strategic, adventurous fun to be had in Disciples 3, a troubling lack of depth keeps this lengthy and often beautiful game from reaching its full potential. There are three playable factions in Disciples 3, each of which has their own sizable campaign, each consisting of multiple scenarios, chained together to form one long story. Unfortunately, most of the exposition comes during loading screens and is spoken by one of the worst video game narrators in recent memory. Blizzard. Icy wind was chilling to the bone. Even then, the irregular writing doesn't do the game any favors, and the wearisome character quips and music that loops too often for its own good make keeping the game muted a good option. It's a shame that the audio is lackluster, yes, because Lord. Disciples 3 is a very attractive game. The lush environments are enticing right from the start, and the creative creature designs are so vibrant and unique that they make even unicorns look badass. Your initial explorations in this world are a delight, and as you expand your influence by capturing power nodes, the landscape changes to match your faction's alignment. Turning a blackened lava field into a verdant forest is just as visually appealing when the tables are turned and you're the one scorching the lovely autumn woods. As you explore your surroundings, you'll encounter hostile creatures blocking your passage and enemy heroes looking to do you in. In Disciples 3, you live and die by your hero and his army. Hero characters are the ones you guide around the map, and you can control up to three at a time. Heroes are unique because you can customize their attributes, skills, and armor, and this progression is persistent throughout a given campaign. The skill tree is more engaging, presenting a tiled board of skills and attribute bonuses that you navigate your way through strategically. Your army, by contrast, can only level up in limited ways. They earn experience in battle and receive automatic attribute boosts for leveling up. But in order to really increase their usefulness, you have to build certain structures in your capital city, which, by the way, is also visually stunning. As the tutorial fails to explain adequately, upgrading a structure will allow a specific type of unit to transform into a more powerful type of unit when that unit levels up. Most unit trees can take branching paths, and your choice will have important tactical ramifications for the rest of the scenario. You can only choose one upgrade path per unit per scenario, so even though your faction may have 22 different creatures, you'll only get to use a few of them over the course of a given map. You control every unit in your squad when their turn in battle comes up, choosing where to move them, whether to attack or assume a defensive stance. You can also use potions to heal and buff your teammates, as well as a wide variety of spell runes that damage enemies, help allies, or even summon new creatures into the fray. Vanquishing a tough enemy is inherently rewarding, and even rolling over weak foes can be mildly amusing. But there isn't a whole lot of tactical depth here. Bonus damage squares, and the ability for certain units to cover each other add a bit of tactical variety, but mostly you're just positioning yourself to wail away on the enemy without taking too much damage yourself. At the beginning of a scenario, your army is stocked with weak soldiers, and your enemies are relatively well balanced to allow you to make careful progress. However, once you reach a certain point, these scales start to tip, and battles become less and less challenging. The enemy AI is competent, but by no means crafty, even on the hardest difficulty setting. After hours of play, you fall into a predictable rhythm. If they look too tough, bombard them with spells before engaging. Once you're confident of victory, enter combat and click the quick battle button to wrap up the conflict in a matter of seconds. Only precious few fights demand your full tactical attention. 
The campaign tries to avoid this gameplay plateau by busting your army back down to the recruit level in most scenarios, but after the third time, this just feels like a hassle meant to artificially extend the action. The campaign takes tens of hours to complete, but you'll have seen all there is to see long before that. Ultimately, your hours playing Disciples 3 will blur together, and not in a good way. Battles become routine, even though the units you fight and the spells you cast are often very cool looking. Exploration loses its appeal because every element of the gorgeous environment is familiar. And building structures and leveling up no longer feels like exciting progress because the end result is a foregone conclusion. There isn't enough depth to Disciples 3 to keep things exciting throughout the whole campaign, but the steady rhythms of exploration and combat still maintain a certain appeal for those with a tolerance for repetition. There are some twists here and there that breathe some life into the action, but the excellent art design deserves the lion's share of the credit for staving off utter boredom. There aren't many standalone maps available for non-campaign play, and the only multiplayer option is Hotsi. Having a human opponent always offers more of a challenge, but the creeping monotony that plagues the whole game is still an issue here. If you're looking for a beautiful, fantastical world to while away the hours in idle exploration and simple combat, then Disciples 3 is a pleasant enough destination. But if you want a tactical challenge, strategic gameplay, or an engaging campaign, Disciples 3 is likely to disappoint you. In the name of the I Lord, will all heresy with fire.